more like it. We got ourselves a series going to a third game here with the Lions versus Navi El Clasico revamped and we Yay! finally saw the Navi that we've seen during the group stage, the yep. Navi that deserved their upper bracket spot. They did it, they performed well, although I will take you back to the start of the game. I sat Oof. down and I don't know, it was one of you that said, GG. That would be me. <laughs> would be and beautiful. I will say a few mistakes were definitely made middle by Magical. The Quav did some aggressive blinks, but you know what? Yeah. You live and die by aggression, and he may have died a few times, yeah. but he came back into the game, and his blink into Yules at that bottom fight on top of the Batrider saved that entire, like, yeah. saved the fight, mm. saved that game. It was very well played by him. Yep, he made a couple of tragical errors, but he recovered nicely. Uh, Hanskin had some really cool tossbacks, though, like read the blink once. Yeah. Uh, just in general, played great. Second time they go for this Bruce Spectre lineup. Ain't working. Doesn't Second work time again. losing. And you said it wasn't because of the Spectre last time around. Uh, but you said the Bruce, yeah, it was because of the Bruce, so. I actually really like the Tricor. It's historically quite strong. It was something, if you remember old school EG back pre-TI5, used to do Bat Brew Animage a lot. Um, it makes a lot of sense because you have strong pickoff and you've got a hard carry and you've got great team fight. Mm -hmm. But I just think this like the Drow, the Doom, like the, the heroes now we had are just too good. Straight up, and, and Drow seems a lot stronger than I think teams are giving yeah. it credit for. I feel like um, the strike core seems kind of hard to play nowadays, at least together. Like if I look at the heroes, also especially with the picks that um, Navi had at the end, I think the bad rider was way better off on a side lane, and you just take a mid hero that gives you more damage. Mm -hmm. Because I think they rely too hard on their ultis. Like if they yeah. don't win the fight and Bruce split and haunt, I don't really see how they win the fight. Yeah, it's it's a really good point because. If you play around buybacks, like the best chance yeah. for a fight win for Alliance later on in the game was actually how that pretty yeah. much final team fight the went Spectre down. The died, bought back. Exactly, yeah. but then he dies back because you just don't have damage, to your point. Yeah. And I agree, if you're playing this game with no real catch with Lasso down, you don't really want to fight with Bruce Split or Haunt down. The problem is if you don't have all the tools, you don't want to fight. Yeah. The enemy team sees you have all of them up, they're going to position accordingly. It's just a very difficult game, and it felt like just Navi had the answers, and at the end of the day, the better draft. Yeah, they had the better draft, uh, despite us saying, you know, probably going to be Alliance taking this one. So we were a little wrong here. Did we Definitely. Say I, I was a lot wrong. It, yeah. I was 120% I was wrong. Yeah. I'm afraid to admit that. I, the nice. middle lane went different. The, the draft went different. And you know what? The first game was definitely giving us the wrong impression of this matchup, I think, yeah. as well. So we kind of, you know, we had a different experience. And this time, now that we know what these two teams are capable of, we've seen both of them win. Do we have a favorite going into the third game? I mean, I'm always one of those guys who favors whoever just won the last game because you're riding that momentum, but you also probably learn more, as Kyle says, from a loss, and you're looking more in depth to the draft and both the play when you lose. Um, I'm also of the opinion that Grand Grant doesn't know what he's talking about, so I'm going to take what he said, flip it, reverse it, squeeze it, and so bop far, it. So far, Kazu, Alliance, every series they've had, win or lose, mm -hmm. always been a 2-0. So uh, they have not gone to a third game yet. For they Navi, <laughs> they have had a series against EG where they lost the first game and then indeed came back with two wins in a row. Do you feel like that, ha like that does that say anything? Because I like to read in those things, but is that fair to do? I mean, it, it at least means that Navi are able, they are able to, you know, they lose and then they can adjust off their loss for Alliance. I don't know if we can say the same thing because they won every game. So we don't know how they're going to adjust. They lost loss. to IG. They have. And then what I happened after? They want to re it's a reality rift. To be fair, I, I, I would lean Alliance just because I think they're playing with a higher degree of execution. We saw this yesterday. I can't remember the series, but that same uh, the Drow lineup with the Viper. I think it was um, yeah, VT or IG running. I can't remember which was which, but that lineup of Navi is just much easier to play. Okay. Oh, we're going to glimpse that guy. Kill him. All right. Hey, Doom the Brew or Disrupt him before they cast his yeah. spell. Great. Or, um, uh, Spectre, rather. And you have a Drow lineup. Like, this hero just seems far too powerful, and I expect to see its stock rise. I don't think Drow should ever make it past the second banning phase. It, the hero's just too good, and we just saw, like, effectively the hardest counter Inspector picked up. It looked absolutely worthless, yeah. and that was, like, a naked Drow. It didn't really have a core he was buffing up. There that was, was not no even a vengeful spirit, yeah. 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 And it was, it's interesting, right, because Drow's actually stock was super high in the group stage, and yeah. then, like, the second day of group stage, it went lower, and then yesterday, it saw a little play, and now, so you think it's just teams are learning how to play it or just realizing how easy it is? Yeah, open, opening days of uh, playoffs are about as volatile in terms of stocks yeah. as Bitcoin used to be in December. 
So it's not really surprising that it's, you know, you just got to buy at the high and sell at the low. It's true, right? One of your strategies, you lose on, on land, right? You're just like, well, guess we're not playing that anymore. Yeah. Time to go to plan B. <laughs> but normally you got a couple of strategies. You try some, yeah. win or lose. You know, you got to try them. Anyway, yeah. we're going to find out what strategies will be used in the third game of the series after this. Get 
get ready. Game three, Navi Alliance Dream League season 13. We are in the upper bracket. Winner gets top six at the major. A uh, very important major, well, and a very important match exactly for that because as Kyle said earlier on, this might just be your ticket to TI. The Hell of, yeah. The amount of points you can get, it's like you're, you're almost as good as done for, which both in CIS and in Europe, it's very tricky to get slots because it's very volatile regions. This is an important one. And not only that, it's freaking game three. It's Alliance, it's yes. freaking Navi. They both took one insanely convincingly. Who's going to take game three? I don't know. Do you yeah. know, Kyle? I'm of no course good. you don't. You don't know shit. <laughs> Kedu, I feel you might know, but you know, I don't want to spoil it for the people at home. Good. I was about to talk about this hero because in game one, Navi, they banned it in their first three bands. In game two, they made sure to pick it in their first two picks. And now I think they're kind of stealing it again. I mean, it's not just a steal because, of course, the hero's good. They yeah. can play it themselves. But I think this is by far 3-3's uh, three best hero. So this is just how they're going to start their own draft. Yeah, and they play it. Obviously, we saw it as a four last game, but they played as a three as well. So yeah. fits. I love it. Yep, and they are once again not letting Alliance have that disruptor. We saw Hanskin on that in the game one, and yeah. Alliance saw him on that as well in game one, and it was a little bit too good for their taste. Yep, you do leave the Slark in, which yes. obviously Doom's in the pool. Doom's good versus Slark, but Doom's good versus any carry hero. Let me see, see if they get it. Yeah, they left Puck, another yep. signature for the Alliance boys. Ooh, Puck well, Treant. You got some team fight already, you got a lot of team fight. Or a team control, I oh, should say. Also, I just want to bring up real fast, this is the fourth consecutive upper bracket series that went to a full three games. Yeah. Yes. Really love good sign. Yoda. Um, you know, love that... I just honestly just love the game, right? You think back, we've had Navi Alliance for like almost a decade now. Still high level of Dota. Mm. Still, still high. entertaining. Mm. It's just been awesome to watch like all day long. It's been actually crazy because obviously we saw the, the you know, the, the minor... Uh, d develop and then at the end you've got that epic best of five with RNG and Nigma yeah. and that were that were some crazy games in that and you know sometimes you have that finals it's like okay you know you gotta wait a long time before you have games yeah. like that again and then we saw a couple of those games in the group stage and we're like wait a second is this what Dota is becoming now are we gonna see those type of games all the time and looks like the answer might just be yes yeah. and it's it's just cool as well because the teams are all playing so well like, agree. It's not about... Um, 100% You typically would see a big dip in performance from online play to lands, but it feels like everybody's stepped up. Like, I, there's no one I point to, I'm like, oh, that's the weak spot of this team. Like, if you made the upper bracket here, like, you deserved it. And yes. there's a reason these games went three, these series went three games. It is a little different than last series, right? Because both these games have been pretty one-sided, I would say, obviously, for the other team. And that happened in the, the EG Nigma series as well. And then it turned into another one-sided game, which kind of, you look back at the draft, right? If it's one-sided, yeah. it's probably a draft thing. So I just, I can't wait to see how the first 10 minutes play out. But we're not there yet. Slow down, Grant. We got to set those lanes up first with the heroes that the teams want to play. Uh, with the Lich Doom already, if you're talking about lanes, that's two very strong laners. So is Treant and so is Puck, though. Yeah. And I like it. They're, they're realizing, they're like, wait, most of these games have been kind of decided in the first mm -hmm. 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, Puck's also a very open hero. And I know it's one of Lim's better heroes, I think, overall, from his pool. 33 likes playing it as well. And yeah. I'm sure the supports can play it. You, you had to, like, a couple months ago. I mean, everyone kind of plays Puck, yeah. I think, right now. The hero's been on the rise for a while. Of course, he got nerfed a bit, but still very solid. Can be played in many lanes. And to be fair, he's... Not that hard to play, at least for most pro players. Yeah. So. I do. Uh, I love when that puck nerf happened. Everyone's like, the hero's dead, and then it's still <laughs> first pick, first ban phase. You know, sometimes everyone misreads it. Except that one guy who didn't and brought it back in. I am happy it's no longer the game where puck just goes only physical damage items and just sits there and yeah. just is invisible the whole time and is just killing your base. So that was not a very fun meta. Not a, not a Setsu yeah. fan, all right. Anyway, hmm? yeah, nothing. I was like, not a Setsu fan. He, <laughs> he loved that build. I mean, I know he did. That's, yeah, I saw some clips as well. It's not my style, though. I don't think it's anybody's style to just see that happen all around. All right, so we got the Slark still banned second phase. PL out as well as the Winter Wyvern. And Alliance will get their uh, banned pick combo out of this one. Yeah, and to be curious to see whether this is a Puck 4 or Puck Core. Yep. Uh, pretty much everyone on Alliance can play it. I don't expect it to be Nico Baby, but anybody else is an option. Welcome to the conversation, Kyle. 
<laughs> yeah, we all three just <laughs> talked about that a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Took <laughs> he brought it up, and then I rebuttaled, and then me and Steve had a sidebar, and then uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I may. I have... mean, I could have, I could have not thrown you on the bus, but that one's too obvious. <laughs> Do not throw you on the device. All right, life stealer, Kyle. What, what do you think? This is a here? nice pick here. I this like the life stealer. <laughs> it's a good hero against the tree because you could always rage out of the room. There's a kind of like a. It, it's just a good anti doom as well because you just fight through it. Mm -hmm. Very strong against the doom in lane. And uh, it's just good synergy with the puck, right? You're going to have delivery. Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, I'm trying to. Think. I like mag here. I always like mag, though. I still think that hero is super underappreciated. <laughs> yeah. And I always like I just love a, a hero that can win its lane and then be good against the carry hero since, you know, you can just RP. Mm. And a couple of the typical counters to Lifesteal are already out of the pool and the PL and the Slark and the Morph, actually. Wyvern as well, actually. All four of these second phase yeah. bands were almost targeted at the hero. You still have oh, options nice. for Navi. The TA is still in the pool. That really surprises me, especially considering there's a Puck and a Lifestealer on Alliance's side. I yeah, imagine that's, no, that's gotta true. be your fourth pick for Navi. We've seen TA fourth fa or so, sorry, fourth ban every time. Once by, by either team, but this series doesn't hasn't had a TA available yet yeah. in this phase of the game. Yeah. Honestly, I mean Alliance could take it too. I wouldn't mind that, truthfully. I, I feel like that hero's power level is just too strong, especially the way these teams play. Especially the mid players specifically. These guys are the definition of aggressive snowballers. Yeah. You know, look at the mids we've had so far, like the last game. When did you see a bat versus Quap? You know, like not we're talking often. about a time machine. Are we are we like at TI too? Because that's not a matchup I think I've seen since then. Mm -hmm. no, it's these these two mid players are they're very similar, which always makes it fun, right? Yeah, the only thing I wouldn't see Alliance pick the hero here, and I think it's kind of unrealistic that they will get it on the last pick. So I think it would kind of get banned before. Therefore I think it would make more sense if Navi tried to pick it up at 18, at least if it makes sense after the incoming Alliance pick here. Because you just don't want to pick it here and get like Huskar or yeah, something. Yeah, like I think there's there's yeah. still a lot of counter picks open, like your Huskar, Viper, and so on. You'd only really take it if you're actually, you know Navi's going to take it, and you're like, well, shit, we forgot about it. But uh, yeah, you're probably right. No one wants to get Huskar in a game three no, at the upper bracket. Not definitely not. I mean, usually you just pick TA in the space where right after you get to ban for the hero and you take out the counters, so... Now, I think that's probably what they're thinking of. They gotta have a plan for that if it's the case. Yeah, taking Hefty heavily into their bonus time right here. I for Alliance. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Drow pick up for Navi again as the fourth pick either. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a Manta BKB hero against the tree. The silence is very effective against the puck. And it's actually a really nice counter to the Life Stealer because you, you just hit him from afar. And you buy any sort Found of space. Down. You've got Lich Armor, you've got two frontliners for you. We've seen how effective it is. And again, I just think that power level is quite underrated at the moment. Hey. There he is. We've been bringing that hero up a lot. Finally decides to show his face. Another 3 3 special. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I was surprised to not see him play his offlane Chen. We didn't see it banned. We didn't see it picked. Oh, yeah. When are we going to have the zookeeper back? Maybe it's out of flavor. There's the draw again. I like it. They I, clap, too. What do you think of... Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> Navi just clap when they got yeah. the pick. They're like, all right. This yeah, Posh has a good. huge smile yeah. on it. It's good. Yeah. A real big smile. And, and the thing about game three is, again, I, I kind of always try and give an edge to the squad that's got the easier uh, executable draft. And draft lineups, like, you look at this. It's just Doom, the guy you need to kill. Lich Armor, the guy getting damaged. If you need to run away, pop center ult and draw, just farm and deal damage. It's just, it's simple. And you also have uh, this next pick here. I think Medusa is a possibility, it, or TA. Both magical specials, yeah. you've got a ton for it, and they're both synergized with Drow. And look, at they, look at their heroes and look at last game. If they don't pick a Quap, they're <laughs> crazy. We got the draft, baby. Just run it back on them. Run it back in the, well, it's I mean, the same. The, the only draft, difference is Lich, Lich instead of yeah, Disruptor. But the other three. Yeah. But the rest is exactly the same. They banned the Razor. Weird. Yeah, last game, Alliance banned out Viper at this stage of the game, so Viper also still Maybe cool. Yeah, maybe they're thinking about the Viper. It's quite nice here. It's a Doom Absorber, and it's quite good against the Centaur. Your draft would be a bit slow, but your like potential when you five ball would be insane with an Abaddon Lifestealer and Viper Cores. I'm pretty sure this is a puck for Hanskin at this point. Okay. And a Fada Tree, so you're going to last pick Limpsero. I think Navi might even pick Viper, or it's a 
possibility for them at least. And it's very good here. Yeah, and point. Alliance are Alliance already banned Razor for you. Yeah. This also I believe we saw in the series yesterday as well where there was a Drow Viper against the tree lineup and yeah. they both had BKB Manta to point and Tree's just oh, said, yeah. well what do I do now? Yeah. Coach Mag in the drafting seat. Nope. And they ban out the Viper <laughs> right. themselves so is oh, we got a shadow fiend. I love it. I like it, and this is you know this is a style hero. I, if, if if you're not thinking TA before the pick, you got to be thinking it now. But with Drow Aura, yes. this is definitely a very high skill matchup. And to me, like yeah. I would just love to see TA versus SF in the deciding game three of Navi versus Alliance. Like, please give it to me. I mean, they're surely are these supports supports that would actually help out mid lane, or are we going to see a true mid matchup without rotations or without a lot of rotations? I mean, neither team really has the best heroes that are going to you know cruise by middle. Maybe Doom if he gets a good creep and his mm -hmm. lane is going well, he might come in from behind. But it should mm -hmm. right, it should be a one on one in mid lane in this game. Love it. Just need a good matchup though. Otherwise, uh, it's I think not going to be as much fun. I TA? think the A makes a lot of sense for them. I think it's synergized as well with Abba and Nix, <laughs> but you. There's a Rubik, so Puck will be mid against yeah, SF. How does Puck do against SF? It's it's typically Puck favored. You have more base damage at the start. Definitely. The Drought Aura does help equalize it. It's very... Uh, we saw this matchup yesterday as well. If the Puck wins the block, SF has to skill Nuke first, push yeah. the lane. If you get double waved, you're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. If you get the lane control yourself, you can skill Souls. It's a really interesting decision here. A lot of emphasis now on Nico Baby to just go off, but looking at this lineup, I again just feel like Navi's got the easier game plan. They can translate kills into objectives easier, and it's like it's Drow and Seth. I've yet to see this composition lose. Um, I want to hear Kazu. I would say that Navi has a. Just to add on to his point, I think they have the easier lineup to play. Okay. I also think that also just Roshan is really easy for them in yeah. this game compared to Alliance, and therefore I would I would favor uh, Navi's draft slightly here. All right, let's find out what's going to happen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Game 3, Navi Alliance with OD Pixel and Fogged. We've got it, the all exciting game three between Na'Vi and Alliance. We've had two games so far, both of them pretty much have been sort of showcases from either side, right? Game one, yep. it was all Alliance. Game two was pretty much Bless all Na'Vi. We're here in the game three. Yanis, what do you expect to see? Well, it's Limp playing another one of his heroes, right? Limp seems to be playing like his his style every single game. And I mean, I do love, I do love me a good Limp puck. Should have a pretty okay start in that mid matchup, of course, versus Shadow Fiend, as you have that huge base damage advantage. So, definitely going to be looking at how well he does there, because he definitely could just he could just own magical at least those first few waves, and then you get that big lead at the start. We'll probably see the raises just get skilled immediately, as always, as we see on the uh, on the Shadow Fiend in these type of occasions, so that he can actually last. He already has the two mangles already prepped, so you'd imagine so. So you can secure that range creep. Obviously, with uh, a lot of Navi's draft as well, similarities to what they did do in game almost two. identical. Yeah. Do you think that's, uh, is that a wise move or do you think that's something that Alliance have clearly switched up their draft in response to? And I feel like we've seen before, you know, teams when they do stick to a very similar draft game into the, into the next one, it does get countered. I, I do think they, they definitely have some stuff in preparation. I don't know if they like knew exactly that the Centaur was going to be coming around or anything like that, but they have Puck and Tree and Protector versus the Centaur. This is excellent heroes versus that because you pop the Stampede if you get them inside of the root or inside of that coil, they're kind of just stuck there. Right away we see those raises versus the orbs. And Limp has a pretty good positioning here of the lane, because he's gonna be able to if he's able to secure these, he can actually 
further pressure if he goes for on top of the uh, Shadow Fiend here on this next wave. With that phase shift, he can dodge some of the raises too and mess with SF glasses. Yeah, Limp should have a good time here anyway, so. And there's also other things I have in this game that we don't really see traditionally too often anymore, but Puck and Lifestealer. There's an Infest Bomb in this game, and there is a Drow Ranger. Infest Bomb versus Drow is pretty scary if they can just, you know, accomplish it, which they should be able to with the way that their draft is. They also have ways to protect versus the Doom this time, unlike last time. They actually have a hero that can heal, you know, that Abaddon will be able to actually hopefully counteract a little bit of that Doom for the side of Alliance. On Navi, though, like you said, very similar draft to last time, but they don't have the Disruptor, which I thought was actually massive for them. It, it did. Ilias got game. so many plays where he caught, like, Alliance overextending, and then he would glimpse them back out of position, so... That, that catch, was I mean, one thing that I thought was so big. They definitely do still have catch, but it, it, it's, you, you are going to feel that lack of Disruptor for sure. Yeah, and the catch, like, catching Puck, should be pretty damn difficult. They've got the Sinister Gaze, right? They've got a Gust, but what's the real lockdown for a Puck in this game? Like Centaur Stun, sure too, but they're tough. They can be pretty hard ones to land, so Puck could have a pretty good time being very oh, elusive. Yeah. And Bosch is, Bosch is taking him for a walk. This yeah, is a little weird a here. a bit of a walk Look at this. from the off lane all the way down and over into the, the sort of the safe lane jungle area. Okay. As I mean, away, it's what Fada and uh, Hans can stay persistent. Obviously, for Bosch, it's a little more painful. Here's the the man who needs the farm. Right. That's that, that position three. And Where's he's this? now going to TP back to the lane top, but the creep wave... Where's it going to go? It's pulled over. You know, Nico Baby's got control. He's he's trying to find a wave. He's finally found one, Pasha. Oh, look at the Radiant Creeps. Where Are they, are they going to go to the mid lane then? Or where the hell is these... these okay, Range Creeps going to go there, but Melee Creeps... Okay, one of them went to mid, another one's traversing across uh -huh. the river. So we've got... I think we... I believe a few of those range cre those Melee Creeps went to the mid lane, and then one Range Creep is like, I'll just take the other path. I didn't really care. <laughs> I love when I see that. But yeah, we did see Life Sealer. He was doing the right thing. He was pulling the creeps to the neutral, so he was maximizing his farm during that one. And now they actually met themselves bottom for tri lane. Versus a Drow Ranger. So, Drow has to be careful of her positioning down here now. And do you think they'll keep it like this? That one up. Support focused out. You know, you keep. Just leave that top lane to, to be as it is. You know, the live stream has had that good start. He's going to be fine on his own, right? Yeah, start down here with your supports, but you probably want to look to make moves and just because you don't want to split tri lane experience. Like, just get some pulls going on or something along those lines so you don't just split full. Unless they bring a third hero down and then you just battle, which that is going to be the case, it seems like, as Zayats. He finds his Alpha Wolf, as he always does seem to do. Yeah, very nice uh, in this lane, especially with the Drow punching away. Yeah. You're going to have a good amount of right click. <laughs> Curry does go down, stand to south side, is able to walk in and find it. He's got no regen now on 33 because that courier goes down. I thought I was trying to get some out for him. I mean, the case, looks like Hans Ken, he's, he's still got some, some regen to hand out, so we'll be able to keep 33 in tip top shape. Top lane, you know, obviously off the back of that star, Nico Baby is having complete free farm, 27 and 12. And Pasha kind of has to, he has to kind of manipulate the wave up here because of the advantage Nico Baby's been given. He can actually just hit him. He has a straight javelin. He actually didn't go phase boots, just straight javelin versus centaur. Yeah. Pretty it's, cool, actually. That little bonus damage can definitely really add up because of your attack speed. No, I mean, we, we've seen, um, uh, I can't remember who it was, some of the uh, Chinese players. You know, if you was get, it Yuris, maybe? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, If you do have free farm as a life stealer now, the best efficiency is just to go for the straight up Maelstrom, no booze. The sooner you get that Maelstrom, the sooner you're going to be able to clean out neutral camps, and it's just going to bring in yeah, the boots and everything else a little bit faster. So thanks to this area of space that he was given at the start, he can get away with this more efficient build. Yeah. And now Zayats, the punches are adding up. He's going to be able to get out of range 33s. Not able to close that gap. Yeah, it's like uh, Centaur actually can't like trade hits. Sometimes in these matchups, like as a Centaur, you build up your retaliates and you can trade hits. But now with the Javelin, yeah, it makes it impossible to end the level, of course, with Life Sealer. Yeah, getting yeah. those retaliate stacks hurts. That might be, we might find, this might be the earliest Maelstrom of all time. Right? On a Life Stealer. On a Life Stealer. It was a quick one in that game in the minor, but uh, yeah, this one is, is definitely going to be up there. He's he 500 away. If he gets that Mithril Hammer sent out ASAP. It's going to be very, very quick. We'll see if we are able to bring up this down. That if uh, if things continue as they are, and it looks like they will, you know, no one else is going to go up here anytime soon on Navi. So uh, Nico Baby will will have all this space. I mean, this is this is cool, right? Like, that's going to be pretty insane. 
mid, pretty much dead even. First few waves, Limp was doing excellent, but then SF, you get your levels. You're able to just always constantly put those raises and push the wave in. And he's, yeah, he's pretty much got it done. All right. So six minute, six minute Maelstrom, if he does choose to buy it and bring it out. Rune being checked. Nicely done there by Zayats. Since he does have a bottle versus bottle matchup, you want to have your supports checking those. Yeah, and yeah, that's, Maelstrom is done. It's on the way on its courier. Okay. So six, oh, I believe it was like six, oh, 6.05-ish oh, when we saw it. It's a six minute. It's probably, I, I think it's probably one of the fastest ones we've ever seen, if not the fastest ever. On down bottom, Crystallize. Has had the Frost Shield. Father's gonna try and get the slow with the Nature's Grasp. Once Crystallize. Them. They're gonna use the Dream Card here. They really wanna get a kill out of this rotation, and they will. They'll find Zayats. He so wanted the Drow Ranger there. He tried to even waiting right forward, or for yeah, he just couldn't get on there. That's four heroes hunting for that. That just looks weird. <laughs> I mean, as I say, but it's perfectly fine. Oh, right? you sure. Got, you got four points now in the passive, so you have great attack speed. Your, your farm rate is just gonna go through the roof. Uh, yeah, looks like so we did have another fast one this tournament, but indeed this one, 42 seconds faster than that other timing that we saw early this tournament. So, Insane. very... Very impressive, and you, honestly, you just got to keep your eyes on that life stealer. Nico Baby's farm is going to skyrocket unless Navi can get over there and do something to slow him down. Bottom lane, 33. He's feeling the power of this tri lane. Navi will this time around be able to kill him off. Yeah, this tri lane is definitely a problem for Alliance. This Alpha Wolf aura is way too strong with the Drow Ranger sitting in the back lines, and they have great ways to just like run at you. You put the frost shield on the Doom, and that's exactly what we saw. 33. He's getting slowed down quite heavily. And compared to Pasha, who's level 6, he's 2200 net worth. Love and life up here. Even though he's versus this Maelstrom life stealer, he's still getting his own farm. So I think Limp is probably going to be the one that tries to bail them out. Whenever he does see an opportunity for him to TP your setup on that bottom lane, he will more than likely. Actually, no, they just they decide, you know what? Screw it. Let's just move the lanes. Life stealer goes bottom. Yeah. And they send the Abaddon top. Okay, that's another approach. I think we're going to see Na'Vi switch something around in response to that. Yeah, they already, they already yeah. completely left the bottom lane. As soon as... Nico Baby did show himself. There's brown boots coming out. Of course, phase boots will be done very, very shortly. A tip? Yes, because he got the ward in the mid lane. Well, mid lane that has gone very, very even. He's got a haste rune. So Limp, we could, we're probably going to see him get very active. And now 33. He's got to just kind of run around here. Be, I mean, if they want, they have the stampede. And of course, 33 yet to hit level 6. So no more time. They'll use that stampede. Get Magical in position. And that will be a, a very nice kill for Magical to, to be able to step across, get himself involved in. Uh, 33's game continues to, to get slowed down pretty heavily. He's having a rough opening to this one. Yeah, not not great. As he was, you know, put in that bottom lane for them to try to get them, get him, get him that good levels and good farms. But yeah, he's just getting quite crushed everywhere he goes. Got to find himself some way to find that space so he can get that level six, so he can be a lot freer. I do, I do think though at the moment he won't be too worried about how bad his game has been hindered because of how well Nico Baby's game's gone so far. Yeah. He knows that this life stealer, he's just he's just huge. You know, this is a, a massive life stealer. This early on, it's a decision they made, right? It's that's that's yeah, what happens. That's you set up a lane. That's a trade. Yep, exactly. So. More money for Nico, baby. The tower is claimed, and um, we'll see where he heads next. He can pretty much just move from lane to lane and start just being this presence. He's gonna find. Oh, he finds a nice, a juicy stack here. He's gonna do a decent job of uh, farming through this as well with that maelstrom. Sure, it's not necessarily quick, but it. It's relatively safe. He's got the living armor. He's got he a bit of lifesteal. He steals the farm from yeah. the drow, right? That's and the shadow feed. That's really They're important. salving him up as well, making sure that he can fight through the stack. And he's slowly but surely taking it away from them. Yep. Fada does go down bottom. Distraction. And they, another. How many? Wait, wait. Is that the third or fourth ward that I've seen the Lions lose already? Actually, they've lost pretty much all of their wards. Now the investor does come out. We mentioned that at the start. They are going to look to get aggressive with that one quite a lot. They might want to go for this as well. They do still have Dream Coil if Limp can get in. It's got to open a second, but looks like he doesn't want to try and commit Passion. A uh, fair bit too tanky. And they know that there is a likelihood that Na'Vi can bring him back up around that shrine area to come down upon them. So they'll let him go. 
didn't have to pull away from the Ancients for that, so some of the Ancients will remain there for Na'Vi to claim themselves. But uh, definitely able to take a little bit away from Na'Vi there and can now start to, to eye up the potential of pushing down another Tier 1 tower on this top lane. Onskin, the slow coming out, that multi-shot. Can't quite avoid it at all. A couple more hits and he will just easily get brought down. He was, greedy. he was being greedy, farming down there. They do have a catapult still alive bottom, so maybe we will see Navi continue that pressure to try to go for the tower here. Looks like Crystallize is trying to force the lane in. Nico Baby trades up top. I mean, it's another... T yeah, Nico, he's just having the dream game. Yes. That's two yeah, tower last hits. six-minute Maelstrom, you far free farm top, you free farm bottom, you get it. You last hit on the tower bottom, you steal some Ancients, you go top, get the last hit on the tower there. He is having an amazing time. He didn't steal all the Ancients, but he did take some. He took, so, he took yeah. some, you know, he got a couple out of it. Lots of TPs coming down limp. He gets the coil onto the Drought. They've got the Stampede though. They're smart, they save it until the coils be used. He goes for the TP in the trees and he's gone. Nothing else to catch him. His crystallize remains alive. It does have to do so. It's, you know, obviously the plus for, for Na'Vi being at the moment, the short crystallize. He's a, he's a decent sort of 2k behind the, the life stealer, but they have this sort of duo carry setup. You know, yes. The SF is very much just just as much of a position one as the Drow is this game. Yeah, and they're they're looking, I believe they're still looking to stack and continue looking at those Ancients and oh, look at that, a quick early Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade SF. Picked up on Magical. All right. Seen a lot of plays with Requiem that people yeah. have been doing lately. I mean, it is very strong now. That fear, that pushback, if you mm -hmm. can get yourself in some sort of a position to to show, you know, shove the enemy into the line of fire off the drow or, or shove them deeper into the lane but underneath your towers. You can make some very sweet plays, but you, you do kind of have to make those plays right. You've invested in the Shadow Blade very early on. You've got to make it pay off. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's still a good item overall, though, right? Like, if they don't have detection and they go for a play with, like, Puck Life Series, just invises, you know? Sometimes something devastating can happen when you just don't realize it at some point, but they'll notice it pretty early on. I mean, that, that's they'll the thing, solve it. This they'll level solve. of play, one for of the reasons sure. why we don't see a lot of Shadow Blade is because turning up without detection, yeah, that's not really an option if you're a professional player. Mm -hmm. It happens, though. It does, it does happen. happen. It does indeed happen to the best of us. Oh, he gets pulled again. Hanskin found again down bottom. Second time now. Playing a bit greasy, greedy and getting punished. Uh, they are getting their crystallize involved in a lot of kills. With the way that they were able to play that tri lane. Yep. Drow suddenly getting a, a good bit of action in this early point of the game. Limps on the hunt. He's going to pop the dream coil. Finds himself science. Jumps in with the DD. Has no trouble taking down the Doom alone. Man, that waiting risk cast, cast range with the talent is so far. <laughs> pretty crazy. And on top of that, he's going to have to blink pretty much yeah. done in uh, a few creeps' time. So the reach and catch of Limp, it, it's going to be massive. And getting into the back lines, right? That's what we just keep, we're going to be keep, keep talking about. You're playing versus the Drown and Shadow Fiend. Getting into the back lines is going to be absolutely everything for the side of Alliance. And they have, you know, they have the Infest Bomb. Also, of course, you know, Fada did get an iron, you know, the GG, GG tree on tree effect again. again. Yep, sure. That'll be nice for him. Still, 2k lead for Na'Vi, the, you know, Magical's SF. He's he's using the space very nicely. They haven't been able to get in on him. As you, as you say, you know, with the Shadow Blade, it is harder. They have to come over, you know, prepared to go. He's going to go for the BKB next. So then he can really start making these, these aggressive plays, leading him with the Shadow Blade. And, and obviously through the BKB, not really a whole lot that Alliance can do to, to bring him down. Obviously, there's a little bit of control there, but in terms of damaging the SF, it's going to be hard. If he's able to stand his ground alongside the Drow, he's going to hit very hard. Yeah, I think that's the absolutely the right item choice. I think the pro we'll probably see the Drow do the same thing, crystallize after the Hurricane Pike. The BKB. Yeah, I think it's just such a good item because they have such good ways to get into the back line. That's the kind of way you counter. Clever wards coming out. That's So Navi seem to be very prepared in this series, in particular for the rewarding game. Because like I said, I think they dewarded like three or four, I want to say, early on and limited some of Alliance's vision. And now they've put down such deep vision that they can look to make these deep aggressive plays because they have a lot of information of where Alliance is. Hanska has been caught out a couple of times on this uh, half of the map. Doesn't look like he will be this time. He stays back, keeps us safe. Grove bow is found for uh, for Navi. Pretty good, <laughs> pretty good uh, time to get a Grove bow when you have a Drow Ranger and a Shadow Fiend exactly on your team. Not. You know, one of those will certainly take it. 
Uh, it kind of depends who's got the slot ready to go. As both of them are farming very well, Magical and Crystallize. SF benefits more a little bit, right? Because he actually has yeah. magic damage, so he actually benefits from that aspect of it. But Sure, but like I mean, said, having, depends the, on the slots. having the range and obviously the double benefit with the multi shot can also be appealing to the draft. Yeah, no, de definitely. That's for sure. There's the jump. He is in, he's hunting, obviously ignores Pasha. He goes straight for the big one, finds himself the catch onto Magical. Very nice move from Lim. And he had the dust prepared, as you he saw did. there. He Even though Shadow Blade was on cooldown, professional. they were prepared with their dusts. They know. And that's, that, I say, for me, this, the Shadow Blade is definitely a little bit of a question mark. I, wa I want to see what he's able to do with it. Yeah, because it's, a lot not, of the players. it's just not going to save you from those sort of plays. Limp, he, he's going to have detection every single time. He's going to be making that jump on you. And effectively, that's 2,800 gold that isn't going to keep you alive. Yeah, definitely. We've seen a lot of players just prioritize just getting the BKB on Shadow Feed because it's just something you absolutely need as the Doom comes up, but it's right next to an Abaddon. 33. He's going to look to just keep healing him up there, and he should just be fine on the Rubik. And yeah, maybe even uh, the chance, to, well, probably not the chance to turn with Crystallize being there, but. Definitely that that big long cooldown put to waste. And that's why we saw the Abaddon picked up in particular, as in comparison to the last time they didn't have that type of heal to counteract that. And we do see the SF, he takes the presence or affecting building since he has Drow Ranger on his team too. So Alright. Okay. Okay. And he will be getting his BKB at a decent time, but yeah, the Shadow Blade, he's already gotten punished once because of it, and he hasn't been able to make an aggressive play with it yet. Such a good. I mean, this is kind of the build now on life two that we see. But this in if this, this game is any game for it, it's like the, the perfect one. Halberd versus a Drow and a Shadow Fiend. That long disarm versus those range heroes. Fantastic. But still, three K Navi. They're keeping the lead throughout all of this one. Just farming a bit more efficiently around the map. I think like because you know, thirty three. He's in a bad and he can't actually farm at that type of pace. And no, then Hawk. So it's like they're just they're just getting out farmed a little bit here. Yeah, it's feeling like one of those games that you do see with the, you know, this position three of bad and where if you don't start to roll over them very early on, you, you just slip back into, into sort of being a third support in terms of your value. Obviously, uh, yeah, a very, a very nice support to have. That Having that save is, is always great, and there's yeah. going to be the chance for him to scale back up later on. But for this point of the game, uh, he, he's got to be careful. There's not a huge amount he can do and offer offensively against these hard hitters, you know, crystallized and magical. Every single fight we've seen down on that bottom half of the map in Alliance's jungle, Na'Vi have been very confident of, of about taking it. Yeah. They know that they've got that edge. That's good. Versus Zayats. He gets the, another courier. I feel like this guy gets so many couriers in these games that he just walks up and hits once. They'll get him for it. They will. But he it does feel like all a bit of a distraction. I think Zayats, he's more than happy to throw his life down there. If four heroes being drawn towards it. Mm -hmm. Sure, Alliance, they, they've they got the Lifestealer farming. But uh, Na'Vi, they've got the Drow and the SF farming an absolute treat. And when you sort of put them side by side, yeah, I, I feel like the SF Drow together offers just that bit more of a scare than the Lifestealer alone. He is very big, though. That he Lifestealer is... He is. Very far, but the BKBs, those are going to be really tough for him to deal with until he does get his bash here so that he can like keep them held down and keep getting those extra hits on them. Oh, there we have There's it. one. BKB done for Magical. So Navi, do he's ready can, to go. They and, can flip to go, yeah. And it's also very hard for, for Alliance to get over there and kill him off. We saw them get away with it before. Limp's able to make these moves, jump in. They're going to go for the smoke play now. They do have to be careful about smoking into the SS BKB. They have the 15, as we saw. It's a, it's a full spellcaster puck this game. Lots of magical damage will be coming out from Limp. They, oh, they're on the prowl. Trying to get some some vision out, I think, in particular with this smoke. Also, maybe, try, of course, try to get a kill. But right now, they were a bit limited on any type of info. There's Zyx. It's going to be him. Zyx again. He'll take this. He'll happily give his life. Because bottom lane, Na'Vi, they're making a play as well. They'll find themselves a support. In turn, they catch out Fada, it's a one for one. But it's just the, the difference now. You know, Navi with that play, they're going to start meeting oh. move to tier twos. Okay, Alliance will also look for an objective at the back of that pick. They'll yep. go straight into Roshan. With the Abaddon, with the DD on the puck. He's got the Vlads as well, but Navi's think, heading over. They, they seem to know. Radiance bottom tower is under that attack. Help. And they do have, yeah, Blink, Blink Centaur. They've gotten some good item timings together. Alliance don't quite do Roshan quick enough to, to be confident to, to really fully commit for it. Na'Vi, on the other hand, with the SF and Drow, they can take it pretty, pretty well. And they do have means to, to sort of get out if the 
the fight does go south. They have the stampede available. They have ways to disengage. Alliance just showed himself. And he's, it's going to cost him his life, baby. They are bringing in more, though, Alliance. They do want to try and take this. They're coming over towards that tier one tower. And in they go. Nico Baby leads forward, lips in with the three man dream call. Nico Baby trying to focus down magic with the stampede pop. The chain frost down. They're using the overgrowth, but it's not enough controls. Alliance, they're having to back off. The doom was there. The doom down. They're trying to heal up Nico Baby, keep him safe. As he'll be, he'll be able to back off. They will manage to heal up the life stealer. Na'Vi pushing back Alliance though. Hands can brought back to try and make something big happen there. Maybe Alliance want to go in again. Lim, he's got Nico Baby deep inside him once more. He's going to look for the chance to jump forward with the Arcane Rune. Dream Core is coming back online very shortly. In just about 10 seconds, Alliance can look to make another play. And now they know there's no Doom, there's no Stampede. This could be a good window for Alliance to punish them. And they forced the BKB on the Shadow Fiend. You can see Magical was holding it for so long, he was waiting for the root. Fado was also trying to hold his root, waiting for the BKB SF. Oh, Magical, is he going to show? No, he's going to keep him in. And in Does fact, he get the oh, off. Pasha, he gets the jump. Limp gets blown up. Nico Baby is still going to try, despite the fact that he's lost the puck in this fight. He has to use the rage. He's trying to turn and take down Science, but he's got to respect the right click. A Crystallizer Magical is now Alliance on the retreat. They back away. Iron Skin's trying to keep something going as he lifts up Pasha, but there's no damage for the Centaur. 33 borrowed times committed. He'll get out of there. Nico Baby's still trying to step forward, but they cannot fight Alliance without Limp. Limp getting jumped on like that by Na'Vi puts an entire stop to the play that Alliance was looking for. That means that this window that Na'Vi don't have the spells, they're going to be safe for it. They're going to be able to hold off and make sure the fight doesn't happen before they get their ults back online. Great jump by Pasha. Limp was just a, just a bit slow there. He's got to be a little bit faster with those face shifts because you can see that one. That's one of those that sometimes we're like, you got hit by a centaur, Stompus, with, with his blink up. Or you got, he was pucking that one, so it's a lot easier to just click the face shift. Yeah, caught off guard there, not expecting that one at all. And there's a costing him. His net worth is starting to dwindle and his game quite a is, bit. It's going to get harder. Pipe is done on Pasha, so another answer to the magical burst that Alliance were relying on to get those kills early on. Yep. They're going to go back into the Roche bit. We'll see if they get away with it this time. Na'Vi, they do have members around. Doom Not up in too close, 20 seconds. though. An alliance. Will they get away? Na'Vi, they're being drawn towards maybe that, that top lane. They may get distracted by Fado. He did show for a little bit. And that is going to be the space that Alliance need. They get the Roshan. They'll get Aegis onto Nico, baby. A very important pickup for them to find. Just, you know, being you know, four or five K behind, they needed that desperate lead. Fada will get jumped upon. He's in the trees, but they have people the coming. And he's trying to run. He does pop the ult. Lim, the he's on the back line. He's jumped straight away onto Crystallize and is able to isolate him as the drought. Huge read for Limp. Smart jump. And now off the back of that, they can push on the tier two. They had a creeper a second ago, so back door will still be off. That's he's going to kick back in in a second. And Navi are trying to cut the creep wave. It seemed a little over ambitious there for Navi, right? Like they just had gotten the Aegis picked up. Limp had just come, came back to life and then they tried to make a play on a tree right there after all that happening. It just seemed like it was a little over aggressive. Yeah, definitely. For them to try to do so. Definitely not the move there from Navi. No need to, to throw bodies at Farta. We can see how fast, like Limp, Limp is literally like, Infest is up. Let's go. Like, it seems like every single time Infest is ready to go with that coil, they are looking to just try to take that fight, which makes sense, right? Like you said, when they're playing versus Drow, Shadow Fiend, and Navi getting this, a, lot of, a lot of this farm, if they're able to just hold their ground and they can stand inside the coil and just hit back, that's when you're going to start getting really scared yeah. of the line. So they need to keep the tempo going. Yeah, Limp's got to find fights like this for his, for his life stealer. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, this, this, this SF's going to take over. You see it already. Magical, he's pretty much up there, the same net worth that... The Nico baby is this life stealer. He's been cleaning up the map perfectly. The levels are flowing, and he's near level 20 yep. on on the SF. And he's going for for that Manta after the BKB. So they have an to extra go for way it. to play out of it, out, out of the overgrowth and such. Yep. Lots of ways to to remain elusive and stop Alliance from being able to blow you up with that first commitment. Pretty much like every time you're versus. Versus Trey, you gotta go your Mantas, you gotta go your BKBs, especially if you're versus this much magic damage. So both cores, the Drow Ranger and the Shadow Fiend, will go for Manta, will go for BKB in this game. Does have the damage per soul now, so he does get a pretty big power spike here on Magical. The Fada, he's lurking. That's Heepin and Elias, he's hunting! Finds Fada, they drag him into the races, but there's Limp and Nico Baby with the counterplay. They jump forward, go for the Dream Call, Magical tries for the TPM. Nico Baby, he's got the bash! Magical gets bashed up, Sam people not save him. Ilias in the trees does not even manage to get away either as they lift him up. They get the two of them, the bash being there, and Na'Vi again 
They're getting punished for hunting that sexy, sexy tree. Yeah. They're, nice. getting, they're getting distracted every single time by Fada. They lose those two heroes up top because of it, and they lose two, and a big hero as well. Magical going down because they're getting baited by Fata. They have to be careful. Like we said, every time Infest is up, Alliance is making a move. You have to be able to read that a bit here as Navi. And when you're making a play like that, you're pretty deep with not a lot of heroes. You are pretty isolated down there, making that aggressive play right next to Alliance's towers. Yeah, they get punished. And that's going to be a bit of a low period too, right? When Shadow Fiend does yeah. die, it's a, it's like a double, it's a double out. Because not only does he BKB, not only does he lose his souls, but now he has to go like reacquire them before they can even look to take a fight. It really does hurt so much when you do sh die as Shadow Fiend in these type of positions. They, they, they can't afford to go out hunting like this, Navi. They, they no. need to look at their strengths. Their strengths, right? If they gear up and start pushing as at least three of them. Going out is just the two. It's always going to end in disaster. Limp's going to be there reacting every single time with the plays. He blinked up there, huh? Got to wait till he can get down. But yeah, it's like, I think when you're playing with... Like, Pasha's playing Centaur. Let Pasha do the initiating. When you're doing these type of crazy plays, you're putting yourself in a bit of a forced position, and that's when Alliance can actually respond so nicely. And we see level 20 talent, of course, now picked up also for Lifestealer. So this is a big spike also for him after the Halberd. It's got the 20% evasion talent versus the Drow Ranger and the Shadow Fiend. It's pretty good. There's a quiver and all that too, but it still is a nice item, a nice uh, timing that a lot of players do talk about on that life series. Yeah, extra evasion. That keeps it. Lotus Orb's done for oh. uh, 33 now, so he's going to have a way to to help guarantee the the rage gets off obviously okay. for himself. Just making sure he can remove the silence, allow him to, to a Photic Shield off his teammates so he can have multiple ways to, to get multiple heroes back into fighting shape, even if and, Crystallize is able to line up a perfect gust. And even maybe potentially reflect a Doom. That's one of the big ones I've seen a lot of times lately is these reflecting Dooms, and then you can't cover your Doom, which allows Hanskin to actually instantly steal the Doom afterwards because you just get insta Sun. so you're always going to be able to get Doom if you do get the Lotus before that. And also, speaking of Hanskin, he does have Chain Frost actually stolen at the moment oh. from that last situation, so... Only has a little bit time, a little bit of time left on it, but yeah, Lions have reclaimed the gold lead, and I just realized that it's only ten to eleven. I thought there was a lot more kills in this game, one, but no, there has there has actually not been that many in this one. Oh, still a lot of uh, interesting moves though for uh, uh, There we have it. He's just it's gonna about to go. It looks beautiful. Farm out of creep way. Does give up your position, but he knows. TP's away. And if anything, wasted a bit of time with the, the smoke of Na'Vi. As Na'Vi, yeah, they won't be able to find anything with that. They cannot make a move on anyone. They've got to get back. The wave's pushing in on mid. I'm always a little bit of a... You know, as a, I like playing Rubik and all that too. It's like sometimes you always want to use that Chain Frost, but now in the next situation, if there's a fight in the next 60 seconds and he steals Chain Frost, it's still going to be on cooldown. But I'm probably that probably won't happen, and he probably won't even look oh, to steal from the Lich. True. But yeah, there, it's oh, it's like you what, always if that happens. Well, you always get tempted as these Rubik players because you're like, I have the spell, I have to use it. You know, sure, but sometimes it hurts. So, and but, he doesn't he doesn't think he's going to get and it again. I don't think he's going to really time. look to steal from the Lich. I mean, no. it, it doesn't matter. It won't really matter. But it's well, just something to I point mean, out that's funny. I guess what top priority is what well, you, your Zayas is your passion, your Doom is your stamina. Doom and your right. stun, your stampede, yeah. yeah. Or even Requiem. Requiem yeah. is a big one too that you can still, because the fear applied and the extra damage is oh, yeah, duration, really good with right? Rubik. Yeah. I actually think Requiem is, Requiem is, might be my favorite besides stampede. It's just for the ultimate fight stuff. Yeah. I mean, Doom is great, but Doom is pretty tough to get in most times. Alliance, continue this little bit of map dominance for these last few moments. We're going to have about 40 seconds until the outposts do come up. Navi does want to push out toward theirs that they have bottom to make sure that they keep it. Oh, interesting talent also this game for Hanskin. Usually the cast range is picked up on Rubik, but since he's versus Drow Shadow Fiend, he's actually opted to go for the extra Fate Bolt reduction. It's gotten buffed a couple times now. What's it actually jump it up to? It's pretty damn high, right? Well, that's a lot. 100. Wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's a lot. For sure. 110. 110. Sure, BKBs remove it though, but... Definitely an interesting choice, as we don't see don't see many people do that talent because you always want cast range on Rubik. And Navi, yeah, like we said, ensure that they can control the bottom side so they keep their outpost, get those bounties, and keep that gold. Very, very close. Yeah, incredibly close game so far. It's having a bit of back and forth. Other big item now, of course. That Ags is now picked up for Puck. So those BKBs, you can't just BKB stampede run out of the coil anymore. You have to stand your ground. So 
So that's going to be a big difference maker for Alliance to just be able to set up onto the SF, onto that Drow Ranger. And we're seeing an eco baby with the, the farm that he has with that Basher. He's he is going to be ready to, to sort of tear you down through a BKB. It's, I mean, he has Basher, AC, and the Orb of Destruction. He's going to be hitting really hard on this life He's going to look for the Doom first. Make sure Zayas doesn't get out a single spell. Zayas is gone. He'll buy back. See if Navi really want to try and force this. The multi shot's not going to connect on anything at all. As they're Still? already out of range, Alliance. They'll, they'll sort of reset. They still have Coil on Alliance too, so you have to be a little iffy, a little careful on Na'Vi how far forward you do step, still. Now buyback on Zayat's shoes, and the Stampede, and expended. So definitely a bit of a danger zone here for Na'Vi if Alliance are quick to get in with a play, and they are, there's the smoke. Alliance, they know this is their chance mm -hmm. to really hit Na'Vi got, where it hurts. Oh, they've got real good vision of the core. All three cores were just standing on top of each other for a second there. They see the Drow. Whoever they jump on is is going to fall very, very quickly. If they can get the lifesteal on top of them, he is huge. There's Hanscan. He finds the lead and he finds the drought. Dead. That's one gone. And there's Fada in with the three man overgrowth. And now Nico, baby, he's ready to go to work. He's taken down the two of them, tries to turn towards the SFSF. Will be able to get away with the Shadow Blade. But Zayats does not have the same sort of luxury triple kill for Nico, baby's lifestealer as Alliance. Hitting those timings perfectly. They see an opportunity. They do not hesitate to take it. And not only winning the team fight without any sort of repercussions, Fada falls, but that's another day in the office for him. Alliance can head into Roshan, get this Aegis and Cheese, and Na'Vi, they cannot do anything about it. Let's watch this courier, though. Can the courier do anything about oh, it? Will it? Oh, oh. Scouts, okay, checks the health really quickly. They saw oh. it now, though. They're like, wait a minute, all right, don't, oh. let him, don't let him steal a cheese or anything along. Oh, all right, let's scout, scout it ourselves. Oh, <laughs> oh the, courier, the courier dies. I love it. And Alliance, they'll get that Aegis and cheese for themselves. We'll see that once again, these quick heads up plays. Fada with that blink into position. There's no escape for Na'Vi. As this time around, you know, the Shadow Blade, it pays off It worked. They that didn't time. have detection on Nico Baby on the front lines but it didn't matter for the overall state of the fight as Alliance are just able to, to grow that lead once again. They're now at 4K in a game that Na'Vi, before they started making those awkward plays and moves around the map, hunting the tree, and they were the ones ahead. It's really starting to slip away for Na'Vi now. Absolutely. And it ha I mean, that ward, that ward on top of the shrine, it's a pretty, I mean, it's kind of a common one. The one that they got caught by from the side of Alliance, that one that they have right here, that saw everything. That saw all of Na'Vi heroes kind of standing together, gave Alliance that opportunity. So they're probably going to look to D-Ward that one. They're pinging it like crazy, too. They know that the vision was there for that type of jump. Got a little bit of an answer now to the the, uh, the Agnims. Dream Coil Agnims is done on Pasha. So sure, you're not necessarily able to run out of it, but you'll have at least that, a little bit of a duration of damage reduction. So your heroes won't die uh, you know, as quickly as they have been whilst they're locked down by these team fight controlling ultimates, such as the overgrowth of the Dream Coil. Yeah, really, it, it did seem like it was probably the best choice for him this game because yeah, he has to just try to find because they're gonna they're gonna get caught in the coil. Yeah, they're gonna it's catch. Just, it's gonna happen. Yeah. So. Just gotta sort of buff up your abilities to stand there and fight. Same as being shown by Magical's build, going for the Satanic, making sure that he also has ways to to just stand his ground and fight back. But it's gonna be hard. Nico, baby, a full abyssal blade. As he heads in, Rage popped, as he clears out the illusions. They're trying to shoot him down to crystallize, pushing him back. He's tanky. He Very really tanky with this AC. Look at this. 13 plus 22. Yeah, you see the damage block, the evasion, it all adds up. Constantly getting living armored up as well, so even more armor. And jump forward. It's on the drought. It's gonna find a way to start things. They're forced by the drought, but Nico Baby's going in on him. The number force does get the drought far enough away. Nico Baby doesn't want to dive too far. He's going to the pension over towards Magical. Magical is getting back farther. He's gonna get with the three man overgrowth 33. And they're trying to focus chain the frost. kills for the chain frost and the doom on Lib. Lib's dead. They've lost farther. They're gonna to turn towards Nico Baby. They'll get the oh life my steal. God. Only the one, but no. Nico Baby Nico is Baby. leaving. He's oh not even gonna die the ones. They How's cannot kill him. Jumps into 33. Turns over towards the drought. Now, they couldn't get him the once. Oh the evasion, the tankiness, they cannot kill the Nico baby. I mean, he has Aegis, he, he dropped what, to like 40 HP, but they couldn't oh, bring Nico this man down. He's done. continuing. Rage is back up. He bites himself up another tasty morsel. Oh he's my gotta be, god. He's got to be level 25 now after the back of that fight. 
the life stealer on fire this game. 13-0-3, flawless game for Nico Babies. You know, set up for himself, he had that free lane at the top. He played it perfectly. And they're just throwing everything on him. They have 33 of the Abaddon, just giving him everything. And also, during the fight, Hanskin got godly steals. Stampede stolen. And ready to go again, Red and he goes. Stolen. Running in on a Magical. Magical will put the mana, remove the open wounds. Now Nico Baby turns towards Zyus. He stepped too close. A Missile Blade jump forward onto the SF. This life steal, an absolute monster. BKB and Magical will manage to step back towards the fountain. But the racks in trouble. Alliance, they're not going anywhere as these racks will be theirs. Oh, the attack speed is just so insane when he build, builds it up with the Abaddon as well. But yeah, just keep buff up that, buff up Nico, baby. We can see what he can do when you do. 25 seconds until now, he's gonna have the full squad up for a defense. And Elias, no, and they're not going anywhere for that 20 seconds. They're standing in the base, taking further objectives away from Na'Vi. As this will be a second set of racks. Look at that multi shot. It hits Nico Baby for absolutely nothing at this point in the game. Just continuing in that front line. He's just, all right, you know, whatever. He just sits back there. 33 sits in range to be able to just constantly shield him. They've got Living Armor 2, as we mentioned. They've got everyone up, Navi. And Fada. But what's going to do? Keep ward. They're going to try and jump in, but Limp is going to be the quicker one there on top of the Drow. Drow already burst out of the snap. Even Nico Baby's in. Abyssal Blade. The Drow is gone. No buyback available on Crystallize. Zayas getting low. Nico Baby keeping his eyes on the bigger targets. Takes out the Lich. Goes towards Magical. It's GG. It's over. There's no buybacks for Navi. Alliance takes. Take game three, and with that, the series two to one. They'll be the boys to move on in the upper bracket as they knock down Navi to the lower. Oh, that, that escalated it very quickly. They played their draft. I loved it. I love what I see because it's something that's kind of like unorthodox now, but we went back to something that we used to see so much a Puck Lifestealer, the Infest combinations. Every single time Infest was up, Alliance was keen to look for a play. They were just constantly hunting, looking for the heroes of Na'Vi, and that's exactly what allowed them to actually just catapult this lead forward, allowed Nico Baby to just have this super crazy performance. How did, what, he ended, zero deaths, I know that, but he zero ended deaths. With, how many kills? Let's Nico take a quick look. Baby. 15 0, 5 You just, you can't give this man that sort of space at the start of a game. Six minute Maelstrom into this. I said you had to keep an eye on his farm, and you know, this is what the man does best. You give him that sort of a start, that sort of a lane, he will not mess it up for you. I think Na'Vi obviously going to sort of be kicking themselves for a little bit at that mid game. They did have a really good showing with the Drown SF, but they, they, they sort of let it slip away from them. Yeah, I, I don't think they expected the relentless aggression that came out from Alliance, and it caught them off guard completely. Well, an excellent series from both of the teams here, but Alliance will be the victors today as they step one step closer up this upper bracket as we'll be able to throw you back to the studio to wrap this series up. Hello. I, I think we're live, guys. So that was a game of Dota 2 that was not going the way we thought it was because... Well, first of all, we thought Navi after Lady Stage was doing very well. Yeah. And then Nico Baby is like, well, they're not, Navi's doing really well, but Nico Baby, you know, he's still farming. Yeah. yeah he's was, still doing good. It was uh, like a kind of just four protect one. You just throw everyone on Nico Baby, let him do his yeah. thing. You have a tree and a puck. So even when you take these fights as a single horde, everyone just locked in place. No one can really do anything. The blink on tree yeah. really, really helped that I, game. I, I think that the itemization was key as well, like the rushed puck ags. Like, you get to a point, we talked about how the Manta BKB would counteract the tree, but you can't force staff away, you can't kite away from this life stealer if you're locked in place and breaking coils, a no-go. It's a lot it's, of damage. And it's so much yeah. stun. Yeah. It's just really an excellent play. I thought, I thought Navi was going to win, but I did not expect Nico Baby to just absolutely go off. No deaths, near flawless performance. No, I would say, like, Nico Baby, he definitely, he turned it up. Yeah, <laughs> he did. It's been a while since I've seen such a strong performance from <laughs> carry. You heard him also once the game was over, he definitely was feeling himself. And yeah, I mean, so, rightfully so. Real fast. Watch the, the SF. The SF, he's outside of the Vlad's range, so he's not getting lifesteal here and ends up dying to the Mjolnir damage. If he's in, if Doom is literally just 200 yeah. units yeah. more to the northeast, this is a completely different fight. Maybe this game's still going on. Just these little inches and seconds that separate these two teams. Really cool series to watch, though. And, uh, yeah. 
Alliance top six. Alliance top six. They get the honor of facing Team Secret in the next round. Well, Navi, what? they're not eliminated. Just knocked down to the lower bracket where they will face Team Liquid. All of that is happening tomorrow, I'll though. And you might be aware with the fact that we're slightly behind schedule. So we're just going to throw it straight to a break and we'll be right back with the next series. And I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Rich. We'll see you soon. Capable.